after UAE pays all day pog looking to business, Jonas attacks Pergacha on Superplanche de Belfi. The Tour de France is back on the menu. This stage featured the 20 minute Superplanche de Belfi finish, which has a gravel, very steep last kilometre. Perfect stage for Tade Pergacha. Would he get his team to pace the break back, though? Dylan Turns has won on this finish before, so the break has a real chance because. There's not huge time gains to be made from GC, and it's a pretty hard stage to, to pace the entire day. So when the flag fell, we had this exhibition huzzah compared to the Hungarian horses, which are faster. Geshka tried to get in the early move. He was then caught by a strong break with Schachmann, Kemner, Asgren, Pedersen. So some really strong guys in this move. Would Pagacha bother or tell his team to pace? Absolutely. I think his family were on the top. You see him on the radio. He's always on the radio. Tani Pagacha marshalling the troops, and the Bora Hansgrohe guys were working as a unit. Sharkman could have gone into the GC lead if UA didn't pace so hard, but eventually they switched strategy to just going for the stage for Kemner, who's the best breakaway rider in these sort of stages in the world. He's taken the mantle from Thomas de Gent, and UAE was spending the entire team. Langen gone, Sharkman still pulling, and the gap was 152. So what gap did they need at the base with all the other GC teams who've been sitting in the wheels all day coming over the top of UAE on the little climb into the run into Planche de Belfi to maintain good position to the base. Ineos won that battle with Ghana, with Sharkman pulling like an absolute truck for Leonard Kemner before Kemner actually... I don't know, he attacked him right at the base, and there was a little... Oh, there wasn't too much finessing, to be honest, so I'm not sure he could have really used Sharkman anymore. Geshka then attacked off that, and Dylan turns. I mean, Kamner still gets people to keep working for him. He pays Kamner, but Ineos into the base, but they weren't keen on pacing because you don't want to give the bonus seconds to Bogatia, so UAE paced all day. It's up to them to pace. And they did with McNulty, but he didn't. He held the gap stable, maybe brought it down 10 seconds or so. They weren't bringing it down very fast. See, there's discussions, and it's a big group, actually. You've got Micah in the wings, George Bennett waiting as well. You've got Verona and co. here, and then Kamna, after bridging to Geschke, attacks his fellow German. Geschke, by the way, who podium GC at Romandie. He's looking really, really good for Cofidis. And now the gap is 103 with 4.6 Ks to go, but... As I said, very, very steep finish. You see Bennett say to Pagacha, do you want me to drill it? Pagacha says, yep, rev it up. And, I mean, Bennett pulled very well. I think this is actually really encouraging from George Bennett today, a good performance from him. It was actually Micah who was a little bit less than I expected, but we have Thomas and Yates at the front, Vlasov dropping with 3.6 Ks to go, whether his Swiss... Uh, COVID infection or bad preparation affected him or the crash yesterday. I'm not sure. We have Danny Martinez at the back. Pidcock was looking good, but Vlasov would lose 90 seconds on a 20-minute climb today whilst George Bennett was pacing. So really good from Bennett, but it was going to be a close run thing because UAE struggled to control this break. 1,900 meters to go. We finally have Rafa Micah on the front with Stora, I think, pacing for David Godou. We have Maas there. Roglic is looking good with Kus and Jonas and Kreisfeich. He was just staying in the bunch. He didn't really need to do too much. Could Micah actually make a dent in this Kamna gap because it's undulating planche de Belfi. It's very, very steep. You see Kamna on a 16% section here, then it flattens out completely for 500 meters, and then it kicks up again to like 17, 20% pinches on gravel. And we get into this last kilometer, and Kemner still has a 34 second lead, but you see up ahead, it kicks up, they hit the gravel, and it's not one for weary legs. It depends whether the GC men would attack each other, when would Pagacha go? Because the group is still 10 or 12 deep here, and Micah finishes his pull at the base of the gravel, and somewhat curiously, almost like it was the plan for Pagacha to attack right here, says, here you go. That was, a, I thought, a little bit strange. Pagacha does get a gap, which Yates and Thomas kind of let the wheel go, and Jonas reacts very quickly to Pagacha's wheel, but it was odd. I've never seen Pagacha have a gap like that, and then not not keep going with the attack. I've actually not seen him before really ride defensively on the front like this. Like Arderden and Portet last year, he didn't. He just attacked over and over and over again, and eventually they went to the sprint. But here, 
he was pacing to me almost like he wanted it to just go to the sprint finish and winding it up. And here you got Roglic, Jonas on his wheel. Thomas is, and Yates have lost the wheel. Martinez is going to lose 50 seconds. Bardet doing a really good job. But Leonard Kamner, the final 250 metres, killed him with this Jonas Winger got attack on the 17% gravel, initially getting a gap on Pogaccio, who almost seemed surprised, and we thought, could he do it? Is the Tour de France back? Is Pogaccio going to have a real competition? But maybe Jonas went a little bit too early. Maybe closing that Pogaccio gap at the base cost him because the Slovenian in the saddle reeled the slender Dane back in, beating him once again in what was a fantastic head-to-head battle on the Super Planche de Belfi. Back-to-back stage wins for Pagatcha, another 10 bonus seconds, but this time only four gained on Jonas, who was second. Roglic would finish third of the GC guys, only 12 seconds down. He said he's in a lot of pain for that injury, but... It seems weird to say after he wins another stage, this result makes me feel like the Tour is going to be a lot closer on battle than we think it is. It is not over yet. Pagatcha taking the stage ahead of Jonas Roglic. Kemner unlucky to be fourth. Thomas losing 14 fifth. Godou sixth. Enric Must on 21 seconds. Bardet on 21 eighth. Yates 29. Kuz 41. And Martinez will lose about 45 2, as well as Vlasov 90 seconds. Pagacha extends his lead in the yellow jersey to 35 seconds over Vingegaard. Roglic actually moves up to about 13th or 15th now with gaining time on a lot of the other riders. Is he too far out of GC contention? Should he be used as a second threat? I don't know. It will be depend on his condition, obviously. Hope you enjoyed the video. Another win for Pog, but reasons for optimism. Tomorrow's looking like a break stage or maybe a reduced punch sprint. I'm not sure. Depend on the team's motivations, and I'll see you with the recap of that tomorrow. Ciao.